In the previous video, we had a look at static generation without data. In this video, let's take a look at static generation with data. That is, generating the HTML after fetching some external data. Now to get us started, I have generated a new Next project using Create Next app. The project is next-pre-rendering. I've also made some changes in the project. I've deleted the API folder in the pages folder, deleted home.module.css from the styles folder, and finally changed the index.js file content into a simple component that renders an h1 tag which displays Next.js pre-rendering in the browser. Now let us learn how to fetch data ahead of time when statically generating HTML. For our example, let's assume that we need to display a list of users whose data is fetched from an API endpoint. For the API, I'm going to be using JSON placeholder, which is a free fake API for testing and prototyping. If you scroll down to resources, we see the user's API which returns a list of 10 users that can be displayed in our application. Let's go back to VS Code and understand how to statically generate a page with this list of users as data. I'm going to begin by creating a new page. So in the pages folder, new file, and the file name is users.js. Within the file, I'm going to define and default export a simple component. Function user list, which returns an h1 tag list of users. We also default export the component. If you now go back to the browser and navigate to localhost 3000 slash users, we should see our user list component. What is missing though is the list of users. Let's learn how to fetch that. In Next.js, when you export a page component, you can also export an async function called getStaticProps. If you do export that function, it will run at build time in production and inside the function, you can fetch external data and send it as props to the page. Now, if that is a bit confusing, let's understand better by implementing the function. In our users.js file, we are going to export an async function called getStaticProps. So export async function getStaticProps. Within the function, we can make an API request to the JSON placeholder API. And for that, we make use of the fetch API. So const response, await fetch, and we pass in the JSON placeholder URL as the argument. So copy the slash users URL and paste it as an argument. Once we have the response, we convert it into JSON. So const data is equal to await response.json. Let's log this to the console and see if the data fetching is working as expected. So console.log data. When I save the file, head back to the browser and refresh. In the VS Code terminal, you can see the list of users are logged. I will come back to why we see the users in the terminal and not the browser console, but you can see that our data fetching has worked. All right, now that we have the data, how do we pass that data to the component defined above, which is the user list component? Well, Next.js has a defined convention for that. In fact, if you leave the function as is, Next.js throws an error in the browser 
that we are not returning anything. Get static props did not return an object. Now, as you can see here, the convention is to return an object. So return object. This object will contain a property called props, which again must be an object. This object can contain any key value pairs which will be automatically injected as props into the component. For our example, I'm going to add one property called users, which will be set to data. Data here refers to the list of 10 users that we have fetched. When we return this, our user list component will receive props at build time. So we can pass in props as an argument. We could also simply destructure the user's property. Users here refers to the property in our return statement in get static props. Now that we have a list of users, rendering is simple React code. So I'm going to wrap with React fragment. And then we are going to map over the list of users. So users dot map, and for each user. We're going to return a div tag where we set the key prop user.id and then we are going to render user.name and user.email. Now the user object does contain a lot more properties but for our example simply rendering name and email is sufficient. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser we should see a list of 10 user names and their email IDs. If I hard refresh and view page source, the HTML corresponding to the content we see in the browser is present. For example, the name and the email ID. We have successfully pre-rendered our user's page after fetching external data. And to reiterate when you might want to use this type of pre-rendering, a common example is displaying a list of articles on your blog homepage, displaying a list of products on your e-commerce page, or even displaying a list of topics in your documentation page. All you have to do is define the async function, get static props, fetch your data within the function, and return an object with the necessary props. The props will then be available for use in your component. Now I hope this section about pre-rendering and data fetching is starting to make a bit more sense to you now than the section's intro video. All right, our user page is working perfectly fine, but I want to discuss a few important points about the code we have written in this video. Let's talk about that next.